worship in the king together. There's nobody like him. Nobody like him. Give an unspoken request today. Just lift your hand. Thinking of Hazel, Patterson, lost her sister, and she took COVID and she couldn't go to the funeral yesterday. See, that's how still dangerous it is. Also remember how remember Neil Black's family as well and the loss of his brother. Leslie and Emily Rich. Don't want to listen to all the names because they'll forget somebody. They don't want to do that. Lord, we're standing in your presence today because of your goodness. Some of us shouldn't even be alive today. But it's only your goodness. And your mercy that spurred our lives. Rescued us, Lord. Rescued us from perishing, Lord. Lifted us out of the merry clay, Lord. Set our feet on the rock. Pointed us towards heaven. Oh, Lord, we are privileged people today. Washed in the blood of the Lord. Lord, as we come before you, we bring all our requests. The grieving families. Those with COVID, those with sicknesses. Lord, we just pray for each and every one of them, Lord. Minister to your people. So many of them, Lord. So many, Lord. But you just touch every one of them. And those watching online, your house found, Lord. Minister to them as well, Lord. And I pray, Lord, even as we're standing in your presence, oh Lord, minister to every individual, from the youngest child to the eldest senior citizen. Minister to your people. And Lord, glorify your precious name in this place. We ask all of these things. Remember our country. Remember our nation. Remember your church, Lord, all over, Lord, the province today, all over the nation meeting. We will worship you. Bless your people today. And bless this house in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, same night which the Lord Jesus was betrayed. Even saying those words, you feel it. That same night he was betrayed by a friend. He broke bread. He took the bread and blessed it. Broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said, Tiki, this is my body given for you. This do remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. When he had stopped saying this cup was a new covenant, shed for many in my blood for the remission and forgiveness of sins. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you to show the Lord's death. Till he comes. Jesus is coming. The Lord Jesus is coming. But until he comes, we have to remember through the breaking of bread. Or for let a man and a woman examine themselves that they eat not this bread and drink this cup in an unworthy fashion. Thank you, Lord. Let's come to this table today with clean hearts. Grateful hearts, forgiving hearts, Christ filled hearts. That's a big bread together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you also took the cup. Again, it's a symbol of his blood shed for you and me on the cross. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross.
Galatians chapter 6. This is for everybody here. This is for you today. This is for you. It's for you, honestly. This message is for you. Take it home with you. Apply it to your life. Listen to these words. Brothers or brethren, ancestors, if any man, if a man, sorry, if a man is overtaken in any trespass or fault or sin, you who are spiritual, did you hear that? You who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest ye also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own burden, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now listen to this verse. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Father, bless the word of the Lord today. Bless your word to every single heart in this place. And those who will watch online later. O oh Lord. Let your word take a hold of us, change us, make us more like Jesus every day, that we will be ready when the harvest comes to reap it in. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us not grow weary by doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. The title for this message for you today is simple. Never, never, never quit. Can you say it with me? Never, never, never quit. Brother and sister, I love Paul's attitude in this chapter. It begins with verse 1, number 1, restoring the fallen. We're not to throw them away. We're not to cancel them out. We have to give them another chance. Restoring the fallen. Verses 2 to 5, number 2, bearing the burdens. Bearing the burdens. Number 3, verses 6 to 8, sowing in order to reap. Sowing and reaping. And then number four, verses nine, perseverance rewarded. Perseverance rewarded. Let's look at these just for a few minutes this morning. Restoring the fallen. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trap or a woman, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. In a spirit of gentleness, not judgment, gentleness, considering yourself lest she also be tempted. I pray from my heart as I was writing this little message down, I pray that the people's church, New Nobby, this church, this fellowship, will be known as a rescuing church, a restoring church, a repairing church, and a reviving church. Would you say amen to that? If someone is overtaken in any trespass, notice that word uh, trespass means a fault or a slip or a mistake or an unintentional error. Someone who's fallen into temptation or been caught in the devil's trap 
or snare and fallen like Nelson. Notice there's a difference between not a deliberate, a premeditated or petal sin or slipping. Slipping. Paul says, someone who's fallen or slipped or been caught, you who are spiritual, you class yourself as a spiritual person. How do you treat people when they make mistakes? How do you deal with them when they blow it? What do you do with them? Brother and sister, you who are spiritual, restore. That word restore means to repair, to set a broken limb back, to remove a growth. And Paul also tells us how to restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, not judgment. Can I hear an amen? Not in a judgmental way, not in a told you so way, not to make them squirm or live with a continual guilt trip. No, but genuine restoration. Remember, Jesus restored and reinstated Simon Peter after he blatantly denied him three times in front of everybody. If Jesus can do it, we can do it. We can do it. Paul also warns us, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Remember, we're all vulnerable. Look at the person beside you. We're all vulnerable. Tell somebody beside you, we're all vulnerable. We're all vulnerable to temptation. And I know some who treated others badly have ended up eating humble pie and needing restored themselves. That's why Paul speaks of number two, bearing the burdens. Bear one another's burdens. Now you're not going to bear your burden. I'm not carrying it. It says bear one another's. In other words, if I'm going to help you, you need to help me. Bearing one another's burden. Don't pass all the burdens on to somebody. Well, they're so weighed down. And everybody else is hunky-dory. No. Listen, brother, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something... When he's nothing, he deceives himself. Let's not shirk our responsibility in helping each other bear their burden. As we bear our own burdens along the way, let's also help one another. Amen. That's what the people's church should be all about. We're Christ centered, people friendly. People friendly. Paul puts it down to this number three, verses 68. Sowing. And read me. Let him who has taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For if he sows to the flesh, he will of the flesh reap corruption. But if he sows to the spirit, he will of the spirit reap everlasting life. What we sow will automatically determine what we reap. Amen. You can't sow jagged nails and reap an orchard. You can't sow badness and reap goodness. Brother and sister, if we sow in the flesh, we'll reap in the flesh. If we sow in the spirit, we'll reap in the spirit. But if we sow the carnal, we'll reap the spiritual will reap corruption or everlasting life. If we sow to our old sinful nature, we'll reap what that produces. But if we sow to the Spirit, we will reap the spiritual blessings that come along with it. That's why Paul encourages us not only to do the right things or to sow the right things, but to persevere in sowing the right things. Because number four, perseverance rewarded. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. I love this what Paul says. Notice what he says. Let us. What do you mean, Pastor? He's including himself. Let us. Let us. Brother, I'm saying that this morning. Includes me. Let us. Are you included? If you're included, lift your hand up. Let us 
Come on, if you're included, lift your hand. I want you to include yourself here. Let us grow weary. I'm sorry, let us not grow weary by doing good. He includes himself with us. And I love that about Paul. Regarding discouragement in the Christian ministry or serving the Lord. That word weary actually means to lose heart, to despair, to be exhausted or to give up. Let us not grow weary. Did you hear that? Weariness can grow on you. Let us not grow weary. He didn't start off weary. He started off on fire. But something happened along the way. Discouragement. We can grow weary through discouragement, disappointment, disillusionment. In fact, some churches and believers have become so busy, they're exhausted doing the work of the Lord, that they haven't stopped to enjoy the Lord of the work. And that's when weariness can claim all over us. And everything becomes a chore instead of a joy. That's when the warning lights start flashing on us. You're being busy, but what about spending time with the Lord? Sadly, I have watched brothers and sisters who started off going 100 miles an hour, involved in everything, only to end up drained, backslidden, and eventually disappearing. Hold it. Here's the, here's the question. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Brother and sister, who are you doing what you're doing for? Who are you serving? If you're not doing it for God, stop it. If you're doing it to be seen of people, stop it. If you're not doing it for Jesus, stop what you're doing and have a spiritual inventory on your own walk with God. You can't help others until you get in step with the Lord yourself. You've got to keep in step with Him. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then everything else will fall into place to be added to you. What did Jesus say? Abide in me, and I in you. For without me, you can do nothing. I know many people are doing God's work, and they've lost the presence of Jesus. Samson did it. The church of Laodicea did it. They were doing everything, doing everything. And where was the Lord? I'd say, knocking to get in. Church without Jesus. When your walk is right, everything else is achievable. Could I hear an amen? That's when perseverance is rewarded. So people's church, they'll be keep on going on. Look at somebody, and it just whispered to them. Keep on going on. Come on, do that. Keep on going on, for your harvest is coming. You're praying for your family to be saved. Don't give up. Never, never, never quit. Never quit. Your harvest is coming. Ephesians 3.13 Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations, Paul says, for which is your glory. I'm doing this because I know it will bring glory to God and inspire you. Second, or sorry, Second Thessalonians three thirteen. But as you, as for you, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary in doing good. Second Corinthians four and sixteen. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We're serving the King. Amen. We're living for God in an ungodly world. Brother and sister, no matter how hard it becomes, no matter how difficult it is, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't stop, don't quit, and don't grow weary in doing good because you'll reap your harvest if you don't lose heart. Brother and sister, 
How many have given up over the years? I could, be, I could write hundreds of names over the years that I've served the Lord. Hundreds if not thousands of names who came here or came to the church in Scotland or down the road. Hundreds of, if not thousands of names are going nowhere today. Nowhere. Many have given up too soon. How many have stopped just when their season of reaping was about to begin? They stopped. When their breakthrough was about to happen, they missed it. Don't miss your breakthrough. Don't miss your harvest. Succeeding means because you're determined not to give up. Not because you're entitled to or that the world owes you. But you're doing it as unto the Lord. You're not doing it to, to get praise and, and, and acclamation and all that kind of promotion. See all that stuff, that sickens me. I'm not doing anything for you. I'm doing it for Jesus. But I want to bless you in the way, along the way. Amen. Perseverance prays for divine direction and then stands on God's word and goes forward in faith, believing, refusing to quit. Like the wee Irish man declared, we're determined to win no matter what. We'll fight them in, on the, until hell freezes over. Aye, and if it does, we'll fight them on the ice. When you start something, be sure you end. McCoo's folly. Ever heard of McCoo's folly? It started, he started to build a tower. I was a talk of Scotland. But if you go up to Scotland today and go up there in the north, you'll see McCoo's folly. What he started, he never finished. How many people have started and never finished? Brother and sister, come on. 2 Corinthians 11. Paul says, I started and I'm going to finish. I've worked harder, been jailed more often, beaten up more times than I can count on a death store. And that's not the half of it. Read Paul's life. What a character. That's perseverance. That's the winning attitude. Joshua had it when he defeated 31 kings and took the promised land. David had it when he slew Goliath. Esther had it when she declared, if I perish, I perish, but she didn't. She delivered her people. The early church had it when they left the upper room and they changed their world, filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul had it when they stoned him and left him for dead outside the city, but he got back up and he went back in. And the Lord Jesus had it when he died and rose again in victory the third day. Perseverance. Never, never, never quit. Perseverance is recognizing the Christian life is not one long race, but many short ones in succession. You've no sooner finished one when you start another. And the truth is, you've got to get out of bed the next day and start all over again. To win, you've got to keep going, keep believing, keep trusting, and keep knowing your harvest is coming and will come in God's time. Sir Christopher Columbus, anybody remember him? Anybody taught Christopher Columbus in school? If you were, lift your hand. It just shows you how old you are, Joe. Christopher Columbus faced incredible difficulties. I love this. Listen to this. While sailing west in search of a passage to Asia, he encountered storms, experienced hunger, deprivation, and extreme discouragement. The crews of his three ships were at breaking point, and mutiny was never far away. But each day in his journal, he wrote these words Today we sailed on. Oh, church, come on. Today. We sealed on. Brother and sister, that's the winning attitude. Eventually, his perseverance paid off, and instead of finding a faster route, he discovered new continents. People's church, if God is for us, he will not fail us. If God is for us, we will reap our harvest in our individual lives. And as a church. But never, never, 
never quit. Perseverance is required, not just to start, but to finish. What did Paul say? I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Therefore there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me. And not only to me, but to all those who love his appearing. Would you say amen to that? Look at the person beside you and say, there's a crown waiting for you. No, say it this way. Imagine there's an actual crown waiting for you in glory. Can you say this one? What about this one? Anybody, anybody ever heard of Walt Disney? Walt Disney's request for a loan, we hear this, I don't know why you know this or not, was rejected by 301 banks before he got a final yes. He refused to quit and because he persevered, he built the world's most famous theme park. Brother and sister, perseverance turns adversary into advancement, failure into victory, sorrow into joy. Philippians 1 and 21, what happened to me, Paul says, has really served to advance the gospel. Psalm 30, David said in verse 5, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Paul refused to give up. David refused to quit. They kept on going on. They persisted. They persevered. And they discovered that God honors faithfulness. Mixed with courage. Mixed with determination. Mixed with perseverance. And mixed with passion. Sadly, the church today is obsessed with speed. Quick thrills. Blessing after blessing. Some people want a quick fix. The instant success. A mega church immediately. Listen, ask John Thompson, Pastor John and Jackie, how to build a church. Honestly, come back on me to Falkirk. Years. Years. I'm talking about years. Some nights, it was some enchanted evening, you may see a stranger. Years. Honestly, I remember standing outside, there was two pillars in the week, our guy, but I'm now standing at the gate, and I found a man and his woman walk by. They were going down to the Church of Scotland, and I just stepped out from the pillar, just scared the wits out of them. And I had a yell out, I said, sorry, sorry, I'm just inviting you in the wee, man, the wee meeting here. He says, no, we're going down to the church. I says, that's no problem. Enjoy your church. Get down to the front door. And the man says, I want to go back up and hear him. And they come back up and he gets saved. They went to the Church of Scotland and will forgive him for that. But he gets saved. <laughs> Sadly, people go around churches chasing spiritual rainbows, looking for the perfect church. And when they find it, six months later, they're off again. God is more interested in strength and stability and quality, not quantity. Mere interest will not keep you going on. Mere interest means you'll walk away at the first sign of trouble. Mere interest says you're here, but you're not here. What's needed is perseverance. That comes through love, loyalty, and commitment to Jesus wherever he plants you. Wherever he plants you. Real maturity and growth are always gradual because they come through perseverance. Perseverance means stopping, not because you're tired, but because you're finished. You get that? Perseverance means you stop, not because you're tired, but because you're finished. Someone said, success, we hear this one. You still listening to me? We to hear this one. Success is like wrestling a thousand pound gorilla. You don't quit when you're tired, you quit when the gorilla is tired. <laughs> Where do you get them stories? I don't know. Fatigue and discouragement are never the reason to quit. But when you feel like that, then you need to draw close to God. Cry out to him and ask him for the strength to keep on going on. Our greatest 
example of perseverance is Jesus. Is Jesus. I am 64 years of age. I'm 65 in January. I love Jesus. I love Jesus Christ, my Savior. I love him. And I know there's people sitting here who know exactly what I'm talking about. Because you love him too. You can't help love him. It just comes out of you. Why? Because he's in you. He's in your life. When you know him, you love him. And when you love him, you want to serve him. And when you're serving him, you want to worship him. Aye. And when you're doing that, you want to share him with others. That's Jesus in my life. He's my greatest example of perseverance. Hebrews 2, sorry, 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, also, also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, heavens watching us, let us lay aside every weight, the burden, put it down, and the sin which so easily ensnares us, you've been caught in the trap, get out of it. And let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us. Listen, here's how to do it. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured or persevered the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. He has begun a good work in you, brother and sister. If you let him, he'll finish it. He'll finish it. He'll complete it. Let me ask you a question. Are you struggling this morning? Are you struggling? You thought about giving up, walking away. Are you down? Are you depressed? Are you discouraged? Are you disappointed? Are you disillusioned? Because church can disillusion you. Churches can disillusion you. You're down and you can't get up. Well, you're not alone. But Jesus is here. What did he say to the man on the stretcher? Rise. Take up your bed and walk. Get up and keep going. Your harvest is going to come. Brother and sister, can I just say this to you? Let him set you on your feet today, no matter what you're going through. And remember this, you're on the winning side. You're on the winning team. And your day is coming for your harvest. So keep on going on. And never, never, never quit. Amen? Never, never, never quit. Oh, may God give you the grace to keep going. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was crying out. Sin.
Father, will you separate us with your blessing? Lord, may every single person have the winning attitude to never, never, never quit. May we keep on going on in the footsteps of Jesus. Lord, may our harvest come for our families, our church, and our communities. We ask you, Lord, to open the windows of heaven at the right time that we can rejoice. Yes, weeping lasts for a night, but our joy will come in the morning. So separate us with your blessing, Lord, because we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. Lord, I do pray for those who prayed that prayer on the canvas. Lift them up. Lift them up before they leave this place and let them walk out following Jesus. In Jesus' loving name, everybody say it.